Marco Mandicino did approve the police force to come rushing in with extra funding to shut down a freedom convoy, which is very founded in fact. I believe, personally, that he should resign and just forfeit his pay. David Menzies for Rebel News here in the Toronto riding of Eglinton Lawrence. In fact, it's the home to Marco Mendicino's constituency office. And um, mm, I'm picking up a scent. It smells like polyester is a flame. Could it be that Marco Mendicino's slacks are smoldering right now? Yes, of course, I'm referring to the childhood school yard rant of liar liar pants on fire but there's no other way to sugarcoat it folks marco mandicino is a liar he has repeatedly lied that police services asked for the federal government to invoke the emergencies act back in february when the freedom convoy uh, was on parliament hill and um he didn't just say it once he didn't say it twice or thrice he said it more than a dozen times, and yes, we have the video evidence. Check it out. It was only after we got advice from law enforcement that we invoked the Emergencies Act. We invoked the Emergencies Act after we received advice from law enforcement. The advice we received was to invoke the Emergencies Act. Ah, uh, alas and alack, there's just one little hitch. No police service, ranging from the RCMP to the Ottawa cops, have confirmed that this was the case. In fact, they have stated otherwise. Again, we have video evidence. Did the Ottawa police make a request to the federal government to invoke the Emergencies Measures Act, yes or no? So we were involved in conversations with our partners and with the political, um, the political ministries. Uh, we didn't make a direct request. Did you ask the government or representatives for the invocation of the Emergencies Act? No, there was never a question of requesting the Emergency Act. There was thought, a question... Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, with. but uh, I'm sorry. So you never asked for it. Do you know of any other police leadership that asked specifically the government for, for the invocation? No, we actually reached out to various police agencies when there was talk about some of the authorities within that they were proposing. Now we see the spin cycle happening since Marco has been caught in a lie. And what I mean by that, folks, is Mendicino's deputy minister, Rob Stewart, says, uh, well, this whole thing about the cops asking for the Emergencies Act to be invoked, it was a misunderstanding. Here's what Mr. Stewart had to say verbatim, quote, law enforcement asked for the tools that were contained in the Emergencies Act, end quote. That's a distinction. That's a clarification. Uh, no. No. It sounds like more lying to us, actually. Well, enough is enough. We can no longer tolerate the fact that the public safety minister for Canada is such a compulsive liar. He's got to go. If he's lying about this repeatedly, how can we trust him about anything, especially if he is a public safety minister? Will you please go to our petition, which is firemendicino.com. That's firemendicino.com. Sign our petition. And you know what we're doing right now, folks? We have our famous Jumbotron truck. It's driving laps around Mendicino's office. Um, we're putting out the message to his constituents that their MP is a flagrant liar. And they should remember that the next time the next election comes along. And on that point, folks, uh, if you can kick in a buck or three to cover our expenses, that would be most appreciated. Now, since we are at the Marco Mendicino constituency office, well, why not pay uh, a house call and uh, see if he, assuming he's here, or any of his staffers uh, will come on camera. Um, what do you want to bet the answer is negative on that one? Anyways, let's find out. Well, folks, we always seek the other side of the story here at Rebel News, but what if the people on the other side don't want to tell their story. I'm right here at the Marco Mendicino constituency office and uh, every single door is locked solid. I've been ringing this bell, you know, for eight or nine times. I know there's people there. I saw people come and go earlier, 
But isn't this amazing? They are supposed to make themselves available for their constituents. And yet now that the minister is in a scandal, they're closed down. They will not come and talk to us. I don't even know if maybe Marco Mendicino is in the building. Uh, maybe he's hiding under a desk or something. Who knows? But uh, this is outrageous. I'll try knocking just in case they uh, claim that the bell is broken. But they are just locked down in the borough like a bunch of scared weasels. You know what's amazing too, folks, is there's not even an intercom in which we can have a conversation. Yeah, well, you're uh, not going to get anywhere fast with snowshoes today, but talk about a snow job. Nobody will come and open this door and talk to us. Uh, so much for transparency, so much for sunny ways, sunny ways. What a liar. And I assume the people who work for him have no problem working for such a lying liar. Well, you know what, folks? It looks like Marco Mendicino is making enemies everywhere. These posters are all around uh, the riding, decrying Marco Mendicino. Uh, it says that he supports RCMP violence on Indigenous land defenders. I don't know if that's true or not. But um, in any event, it says to tell him to stop. They've kindly provided a number. Let's give that number a call and see if he'll talk about the issue du jour, namely him lying about law enforcement wanting the Emergencies Act invoked in Ottawa in February. Thank you for calling the constituency office of the Honorable Marco Mendicino, Member of Parliament for Edmonton Lawrence and Minister of Public Safety. Honorable. I was wondering if um, I could get someone to come on camera and talk about uh, the minister's problematic relationship with telling the truth vis-a-vis -vis invoking the Emergencies Act back in February. He has repeatedly claimed that it was law enforcement that asked the federal government to do so. Law enforcement states otherwise. Uh, tell me, is Mr. Mangicino lying or is it the members of the police services? So if you can get back to me, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Well, folks, we just finished driving our Jumbotron equipped truck around the riding of Eglinton Lawrence, you know, just to inform the constituents what a lying liar they have for an MP. And now we are down here at Young Dundas Square, and we are hoping to ask the residents of Hogtown what they feel about Marco Mendicino because of his compulsive lying regarding the Emergencies Act. Should he go? Or are they willing to give him another chance? Let's see what they have to say. A lot of people should step down. <laughs> That's my final word. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't need bullshit like that in my country. Okay. <laughs> How about yourself? I, I guess so. I, okay, you know, there, there, I mean, there's the government way. lies about everything as well. I believe so. We need to be resigned, yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's a tough one, but yeah, probably. Just be thrown in jail. <laughs> okay then. How about yourself, sir? Yeah, same thing, bro. Okay. Yeah. Someone's not telling the truth, whether it's him or the police. Who knows? You know, I never thought of that. I do you think that cops might be lying? I mean, I don't know why they would lie about that. I don't know. No. I'm how, not sure. How about yourself, sir? Now, now that you know the background of the story, should our public safety minister uh, exit stage right? I don't know, man. No. No. Okay, then. Marco Mandicino did approve the police force to come rushing in with extra funding to shut down a freedom convoy, which is very founded in fact. I believe, personally, that he should resign and just forfeit his pay. Mendocino, I don't know what he did because we don't have knowledge, but in the end, he should respect the feelings of the people and uh, he have to analyze and plan something new. Step down. If, if step down, whatever. If, if any another minister came, I hope like he understand and he understand and he knows the history of the old politician and he can do all the things correct way, right? He should be held responsible. Should he be fired? I don't know. I don't know the federal 
I don't know the order of operations or our chain of commands in Canadian Constitution, but he should be held accountable. I mean, I'm a liar as well, so I don't <laughs> Or are you running for office? No, but I wouldn't want to get fired for lying, so I don't think he should get fired. Lying is normal. It's uh, Let's normalize lying. Yeah, I mean, if you're a position where you're you're supposed to be a, like a public figure and you're in the public eye, I don't think you should, for serious matters, lying, not so great. I mean, for citizens like us, like white lies, sure, it doesn't matter, but you know, if you're if, if you're supposed to be, you know, doing something for the country, don't, don't lie about it. You know, what is the most amazing thing that we have found yet again when it comes to politics is just how many people are disengaged. I mean, this is big news what Marco Mendicino has done. It's been in the news cycle for several days and so many people don't know about the scandal. They don't know who Marco Mendicino is. Um, it's amazing because I think if I were to ask a question here at Young Dundas Square, oh, um, what do you think about Kim Kardashian's new bikini? Well. Oh, they would talk chapter and verse for hours about that one. Kind of sad, isn't it? Once again, please go to firemendoncino.com and if you're able to, kick in a few bucks so we can pay the expenses of that Jumbotron equipped truck that is going to deliver a message to Mr. Mendoncino and the people who voted him in. <laughs>